All right, so I got a quick video here on the Red Pine protocol. And this is a protocol for you guys that are racing, whoops, um, one to, I think, five milliseconds of latency from stick to the, I guess, the motors through Betaflight. I will link in the description below the link to the technical details on uh, what the magic is. I really don't understand it totally, so I can't really explain it. All I know is that the latency is extremely low and it only works for a certain set of equipment. So it's not gonna be working for everybody. And again, as I said, it's gonna be mainly for you guys that fly whoops. Um, it'll work for like the Mobula 6 and the Meteor 65. It'll work for flight controllers that have the built-in receivers, the SPI receivers. So on the Beta FPV side, it's gonna be the ones on, based on the Mateca 411 RX target. And then from the ones from Happy Model, the Crazy Bee F4, with the built-in uh, receiver, the SPI receiver, uh, the FreeSky version. Uh, this, I don't think this will work on any of the, any of the FlySky SPI receivers. Now, you need Betaflight 4.2 or higher for this to work. And then you also need either Deviation TX or a multi-protocol module uh, with an OpenTX radio. And with, I think, I don't know exactly which, which firmware it started working at, but this has been around for more than a year, I think. Um, kind of actually kind of surprised no one made a video about this yet, but um, yeah, it, it's been around for a while. But it's it's the protocol was introduced into Betaflight 4.20, uh, I think back in July, and it's been in there for a while. And then it works on all the multi-protocol modules and Deviation TX. It does not, it does not work on native Tyrannus or any other radios. So if, like, if you have a Tyrannus, like an X-Lite or an X9D, it's not gonna work unless you're using the uh, multi-protocol module uh, in the external module base. So uh, if you have that, then I think it'll work, although I haven't tested that. I, I've only tested it on my uh, Tango 2 with the multi-protocol module in the back here and my Jumper T12 Pro. Now, because it only works in Betaflight 4.20, uh, if you have the older Crazy B, the red board, the Crazy B F3 with the built-in SPA receiver, it, in theory, could work if you can build the target, the firmware, the hex file. Uh, I don't know anywhere that you can get it currently, so you may want to check back later. Uh, for those of you guys that are running an F3, it don't, doesn't look like it'll work for you. So just, I know I'm going to get that question a lot. It's going to be for the uh, Crazy B, mainly for the Crazy B F4 and the um, BFPV boards with the Matek of 411RX target. To get this to work, uh, again, Betaflight 4.20 or higher is needed. Um, when you go into the configuration page under receiver protocol, you're going to select SPI receiver. And instead of, uh, you know, FreeSky X or FreeSky D, you're going to have some other options there in the drop down menu. You're going to select Red Pine and save and reboot. And then on your radio, you're going to go to your model and under the setup here, of course, multi protocol, and you're going to select Red Pine here as the protocol you want to use. So I have 1.3.1.59 uh, as the firmware version on this module here. Uh, this is probably not even the latest version. And then on my jumper T12. Let's see here. So on the jumper T12, I have 1.3.0.76 as this version. So at least this one will work. This is an older version, and possibly something older may work. If someone knows what the oldest version that will work on this, let me know in the comments below. But obviously, you probably want to upgrade your module to the latest version to just have any bug fixes or whatever performance enhancements in the um, in the firmware. So, as you go do that, uh, select Red Pine fast. You have to do it. You have to rebind. So you have to go into your uh, Betaflight, uh, either the CLI or hit the bind receiver button on. The configurator to rebind and then you should have a working radio setup one thing to note is that on the receiver page well the way the channels work is you, you get four 
11 bit channels for throttle, um, yaw, pitch, and roll. So that's an 11, you get four 11 bit channels. And I think you get four one bit channels for the aux channels. So basically, three position switches are going to be either on or off. So they can either be low or high. So either 1000 or 2000 for the channel setting. Um, because there are, those channels are one, but I think that's why the latency is so low because very little information is being sent back and forth. And another thing you know, is that telemetry doesn't work at all, so uh, that's another reason uh, they made this protocol for really, really low latency is there's no information being sent back from the receiver to the transmitter. So if you need telemetry, this protocol isn't for you. Now, uh, in terms of the differences between like D8 mode and this Red Pine protocol, it is noticeable. It does feel like it's a little bit more responsive. I think I'm a little bit concerned that I'm going to get addicted to this and then have trouble going back to, uh, you know, normal FreeSky D8 or D16 mode, which has, I think, um, much higher latency, like in the 15 millisecond range. So it's like three times as slow. Honestly, unless you're racing whoops in very tight tracks and need super performance and Super agility, I'm not sure if it's gonna really matter for a lot of you guys, but for those of you that are doing whip racing and are looking for the absolute possible edge, you might wanna check this out. And I know a lot of you guys are probably in whip racing, probably already know about this, but if you're wondering why some of these guys are, you know, performing really well, maybe they're keeping this a secret, who knows? Anyway, um, secret's out now. Let me know if you have any comments or questions down in the comment section below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.